Hey guys, it's Melissa the Cupcake Stitcher. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Um, if you are a new subscriber, welcome for the first time. My name is Cupcake Stitcher, mainly because I stitch and I bake cupcakes. Pretty straightforward. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Um, I really appreciate it. I know that I've been gone a very long time. Three months, in fact. Um, I think the last time I updated was end of July-ish. I didn't even go back and look. Um, a lot's been going on. I've been really busy. I've done some stitching. I don't feel like I've accomplished much for three months time worth, but then I was grabbing stuff and I was like, okay, I did do a little bit of work. So life updates. Work is probably the main reason that I've not been on here. If you've watched my one of my videos before, you know that's a common excuse of mine. But it's very, very true. So we have probably hired at least one or two. I can't remember who we hired last the last time I made a video. Um, but we did just hire another new therapist on staff. Um, we're still crazy busy. We're still working on program development. Um, I have been having to take 530 patients in the evenings on Mondays and Tuesdays so most of the time I don't even leave work now on those days till 7 7 30. One day it was eight o'clock it just works been crazy. The mornings are easy I get all my stuff done and then the afternoons I just get slammed um, between concussion patients and um, new evals and just everybody's coming which is a good problem to have always a good problem but it means we're very busy and then I come home exhausted and I'm making dinner at like nine o'clock and then all I want to do is lounge and I don't have the mental capacity to stitch so there's that um, what else has been going on my brother's doing good I talked to him this morning um, he's getting ready to do a couple marathons uh, while on deployment He's doing two running marathons back-to-back -back weekends because he's crazy. I'm not a runner. I don't understand it. <laughs> but that's what he's doing. I'm pretty sure they're just running around the base. 26.2 miles. Sounds like fun, right? No. And then um, he'll have a week off. And then the following weekend, he and one of his buddies are doing a uh, charitable rowing marathon on their rowing machines at the base. Um, I think it's canines for, or companions for canines or something. Essentially, it hooks up shelter animals with um, military vets um, that may be suffering from PTSD, stuff like that. So they, <coughs> excuse me, are, um, have a little event on Facebook right now and are organizing money for that. Uh, I've been on a couple of trips for work. I went up to Michigan one day, one evening, stayed the night, and then observed in a women's health clinic. I know I've talked about that in the past. It all kind of came together rather quickly. Um, the person that I was going to observe with was not communicating great. And so then it all just, all of a sudden, like I found out on like a Monday that I would be going on Wednesday. So I had to get a hotel. I had to just kind of get everything situated. So that went well. Um, I'm not sure if pelvic floor is going to be the right thing for me. I think it's a very important aspect of physical therapy, but it takes a very special kind of physical therapist to do it. Um, and I don't know if that would be me. I, I think I would just get burned out seeing those types of patients. Um, and like I said, it just takes a very special kind of per person that's very passionate about that area of physical therapy. Um, on the flip side, about two or three weeks ago, I went to North Carolina with one of my coworkers. We went to a class um, outside of Charlotte, and it was called Scolio Pilates. Um, and so I've taken one Pilates class before, rehab Pilates class by Stotts. Um, 
and I really enjoyed it. The person I went with, she has taken all four of the rehab courses um, and is certified in rehab Pilates. So her and I work a lot together um, and we primarily are the ones that run the osteoporosis program in our clinic. Um, and so we wanted to take this scoliosis course. So it was, it ended up being, it was two separate courses, but it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, the one separate course was a Friday. It's eventually going to be mandatory at first. This time around, it was optional, but we did decide to take it. So we flew out super, super early Sunday or Friday morning. Um, stayed Friday night and Saturday night there and then had class all day, flew back Sunday. Um, so that was busy. And then the Wednesday before that trip, um, my nephew actually had surgery. So I had been helping out with my sister quite a bit to watch my older nephew. He's doing very well. Um, hopefully going to be discharged from the hospital in the next couple of days. Um, they're just waiting on a couple of things to make sure that he's going to be okay to go home. Um, but he's doing very, very well. Um, it was a surgery that was necessary. I know that I've been kind of vague on that. It's, you know, he's my nephew and I don't, necessarily want to share all the details if you know me or know me personally you know, might know some of those but um you know just for his his anonymity words for my sister's privacy and his privacy i'm not going to divulge too much more on that but he's doing very very well so um but it was kind of a hectic time he actually had two surgeries within two weeks um, basically it was supposed to be one, but then it just became a little bit more complicated and it split into two. So he's been in the hospital now for about three, almost four weeks, um, which the doctor estimated anywhere between two to six. So we're not, we're kind of right in the middle there. Um, but I took a week off to help my sister out with my older nephew. I stayed at her house quite a bit. You know, I took him to the zoo one day, just hung out at his house, just trying to keep him busy and occupied so that my sister and her husband um, could be at the hospital with um, my younger nephew. So it's been kind of a busy couple weeks, um, especially the last three uh, with my trip to North Carolina for work, helping my sister take care of the kiddos. And then last weekend I went to Sweetwater, Tennessee with a bunch of lovely stitchy friends um, for a private retreat at the Whistle Stop Quilting um, Retreat House. It was amazing. So I went with um, Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching, Lisa and Crystal Kitchen Stitchers, um, Katie Glass, Sharon from 1928 Farmhouse, Candy Askins, um, Candy Stitches, and Delisha, Kentucky Sass. Um, so there were nine of us in total. I hope I did not forget anybody. I don't think I did. Um, we had so much fun. We, we left Thursday morning, got down there late Thursday night. Um, Friday, we went to Dixie Darling. I did buy a little bit of stuff there, so you'll see that in my haul. And then Saturday, we just kind of hung around the house. Um, it was such a nice relaxing weekend especially with kind of the crazy busy schedule that i had had before that even though i wasn't working um it was definitely um, a very very busy last month so i'm happy to kind of be home and back in the swing of things uh normal routine i did work 40 hours 40 plus hours this last week for the first time in three weeks so that was really rough um but I got through it and then I actually have, I wanted to do the video this weekend because the next couple weekends I have more weddings to bake for. So I have a wedding on Friday this coming week um, for someone, I, a friend of a friend. Um, she came to my house the one day we did a cake testing. It shouldn't be super complicated. I did just have to take the day off because the wedding is on a Friday and I normally work on Fridays and I have to go and set up the cake and all that fun stuff. Um, and then the following week, um, I think it's the third, the first week of November, two of my coworkers are actually getting married. Um, 
they kind of kept their relationship secret. Uh, it came out in January of last year. I think they had been dating secretly for a few months. Uh, the boss knew, the supervisor knew, but everybody else, you know, they kind of kept it under the radar just to kind of see how things would turn out. They got engaged in June and they are getting married in two weeks. So, um, the bride, I actually, she has a twin sister and her twin sister was the very first person I did a wedding, um, for in terms of baking. So she basically just looked at me and was like, you know, you're doing my cake, right? And my cupcakes. I'm like, yep. So she's super easy, super laid back. I'm really excited about that one. I will be going to the wedding afterwards. Pretty much everyone at work was invited, obviously. So it's going to be a great, uh, a great evening, I think, for all of us. You know, I have a great work family. Uh, you know, sometimes we're really busy, and it's nice to be able to spend time with each other and just hang out and have fun. So I think it's going to be awesome. I'll probably be really tired because I'm going to stay. I'm going to work all day Friday and then come home and bake um, about 200 cupcakes and a cake. But it is what it is. I've done it before. I've actually done more than that in the past um and still gone to a wedding and somehow managed to survive so uh again another couple busy weeks busy 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 that's uh, just my life All right i've already been talking for about 10 minutes i'm just gonna get into what i've worked on so i've done a couple exchanges uh and i will either i'll probably add those videos at the end of the finished pieces um, just because I don't know how to split the videos here. I know how to splice the videos together and like make it into a really long video, but I don't know how to split a video and then insert things like here. So I'm not going to start and stop the video a whole bunch. I'm just going to keep going. And then those two finishes will be at the very end. So they were two, um, exchanges. The first was for the whistle stop retreat. And then the second one I participated in was, um, organized by Mindy, the Minty Stitcher, um, on Instagram. It was a Harry Potter smalls exchange. So for that one, you stitch a small and then did about at least $25 worth of gifts. I always splurge a little bit more than that. Um, and so I'll show at least what I made for that smalls exchange. And then, um, the smalls exchange that I did for Whistle Stop, um, which we did kind of a white elephant gift there. And one of my favorite stitchy ladies in the world, uh, Miss Stephanie of Just Keep Stitching, uh, was the one that ended up getting mine. So I was very excited that she got to have it. So if you found me through them, which most of you probably did, because they've shouted at me out way too many times, um, they've probably already shown it if you've watched it. I haven't watched it because that's going to be my plans for tonight when I make more cupcakes for another client. So yeah. All right. Whips. I'm just going to do the big one first. My day of the dead piece. You know, if you've been watching me before, um, my goal was to do two pages a month this year, which should have me finish it in November. It's not going to happen. Um, I finished the second page of August, the first couple days of September. I only did one page in September and I'm only about a half page in, um, for October. So I'm still hoping to have it done by the end of the year. I just really got to pick up the pace. Um, I think life is going to kind of settle back into normal in the next couple weeks. Um, It'll just be my normal busy and not crazy traveling all over the place type of busy that I have been. So I think I've done three, almost four pages since the last time I showed it. Um, I am on the last column and I have like four and a half pages to go. So this is where I'm working on right now. This page here, you can see it's partially filled in. I think the last time I was working in her eye when I showed this. Again, I didn't go back and watch, so I don't remember where I was because um, it was so long ago. But here she is. Sorry, getting sunlight on there. 
Um, I love her. She's so colorful. So if you haven't watched me before, this is um, called Day of the Dead. The shop is actually 447 shades of X stitch uh, on Etsy. And it's just a PDF pattern that I found from them. I'm doing it on an 18 count Ada. I think it's Fiddler's Cloth is what it was called. Oh, I got it Michael's about a year and a half ago. Um, so I started this in June of 2017. Um, I had three pages done at the end of 2017. And since then I've done... I have 20 pages total. So I've done 17 pages this year. At least. Is that right? Yeah, it sounds about right. 17 pages? It's quite a bit. Um, four more to go? Four and a half. Four and a half. So that was the one that I worked on the most. And then I have a bunch of new starts. Or I have one new start, two restarts, um, and a finish. So... My first new start is Yule Queen by the Primitive Hair. Um, so when I was at StitchCon, Mitch Stitch and I were walking around right next to each other and we both saw this pattern um, stitched up on the wall. We both looked at it at the same time and we're like, wow. So we decided to do um, a stitch along together. I believe... Michelle Bendy has also started this now at this point. A couple months late, but that's all right. Um, I started it on, I want to say August 1st was the day that we were starting it. It was, I don't know, some kind of Yule pagan holiday type thing um, was the day that we chose to start it. I didn't get too much done. I did have a little bit of a start, and I... I'm stitching this on, this is Shenanigans um, by Seraphim Fabrics. Lori, if you know her, follow her on Facebook. Um, this is Lugana. Um, and so with the Whistle Stop exchange, not the, not the, the exchange, with the Whistle Stop group, we all decided to stitch something on Shenanigans, um, a fall piece. So this is obviously a very... Christmassy, wintry type piece. Um, that was because I had originally started my, one of the restarts you'll see here, my Zuka pattern. I think I showed that on my last one. Um, I'm doing it all in beads and the beads just weren't fitting right on this 32 count fabric. So I ended up getting 28 count fabric and then I restarted that at Whistle Stop, which you'll just see that here in a minute. Um, and so I ripped out the beads that I had put on this one and then Decided to put her on there. I think the color contrast is going to be good. I was worried at first, but um, I just pulled it out again today. I was like, oh, that actually looks really good. So, my small start on Yule Queen. That's one that I will want to work on here, I think, soon. Because it's fun. Why don't I show you Zuka next? So, oh, that's not the pattern. Where's the pattern? Here it is. Um... So this is Zuka by Alessandra Adelaide. Um, it only calls for two different colors. Sorry about the glare there. And so I decided that I was going to do this in beads because I'm crazy. So I bought... Words are escaping me. It'll come to me later. But... So I bought new fabric. This is the same color scheme. This is Shenanigans, again, by Lori. Um, I can't, I was trying to think of the name of the beads and I can't do it. They're just over there. I got them from Firestone Gems and I cannot, I'm having a complete brain fart. So, um, sorry, I'm throwing things on the floor as I, so I can clear out my way. So this is my restart. Um, so you can see I started with the green beads. They've got a good sparkle to them. They're not Mill Hills. I cannot think of what they're... I'm going to look because it's going to bother me. Hold, please.
Delica beads. I probably shared this all in my last video, but they're Delica beads. So I just bought one tube of green, one tube of orange, and a giant case of orange. So this should be enough, but I think I explained this last time. Um, this should be enough, but I got extras just in case. Cause I don't want to have to, I don't want to be like so close to finishing and run out completely. So I'm really enjoying this one. Um, beading process is really not too, too difficult. I know some people probably think it is. I don't know. I did that in pretty much one day. So that's a good, good little bit. And Katie and I were watching, um, OSU and Minnesota play. <sighs> OSU lost to Purdue last night and it was horrible like I'm a diehard OSU fan I have two degrees from there I'm sorry if you're not a football fan or an OSU fan because I know there are many OSU haters out there it was bad I was waiting for it though we always like self implode and I'm surprised it hasn't happened sooner um I had a heart attack when I went to North Carolina. That was the Penn State game, which we pulled back from a, I don't know how we pulled back to win that game. I follow them on like the ESPN app and they have a little like probability chart that changes throughout the game of who's going to win. Penn State had 97% chance of winning and somehow we pulled that out at the very, very end. I also had to stay really quiet because my roommate or coworker was sleeping in the hotel um, the second half of the game. And then she woke up the next morning and was like, how did you not wake me up? And I was like, I had to try so hard not to wake you up and make noises. Um, but I did. So, <sighs> but Katie and I were watching the Minnesota OSU game when, we were when I was stitching on that. So I got a good bit done. There's Zuka. I lost the pattern already. So that was my first restart. That I had started at StitchCon, which was Sunrise by Rosewood Manor. I still want to do Sunset. I haven't found the pattern yet. Every I want to try and buy it from an LNS. And so I've just been walking around and I, like every time I go, they don't. None of them have had it. I've checked like four different stores now. Um. So this was my original start. This is what I got done at StitchCon. I got the first big medallion done, and then I started doing these little motifs here across, and there's supposed to be 10, and I was just like, hold on, that's not gonna fit. And it didn't fit, because when I, when Katie and I were calculating this at StitchCon on whether or not this fabric would work for both sunrise and sunset, because I cut it in half. Um, all right, let's back. We were like, oh yeah, it'll work. But that's because I told her that this was 32 count and it's not, it's 28 count. Um, so this is um, 28 count Joblin by, in Banshee, hand dyed by Stephanie. Um, I really like it. It was not what I had, I had originally purchased the fabric for Skeleton Crew and it just wasn't right. I had seen Banshee before and I loved it but it was in a linen. So that's when I had to reorder this fabric. I eventually, I actually went with linen for this project. So that was my restart. And I didn't get much done. I got the first little bar of that done. So this was on the way home from Tennessee. So sitting in the van trying to stitch on opalescent 32 count fabric was not the easiest thing in the world. Um, it was kind of rainy that day too, so I didn't have great light. Um, but this is this is the exact same color way. So this is Banshee, but in linen, opalescent linen. So much more blue. This is what I had, like I said, I had originally picked out to do Skeleton Crew on. And then this is what showed up. So kind of interesting to me how much those colors can vary. Um, I'm trying to hold up both here. <laughs> very, very different. So I I really like it. Ooh, the necklace is getting caught on things. Don't rip the fabric.
Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't caught on the fabric. I was caught on the needle minder. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm a mess, you guys. Absolute mess. I really like the blues in this, though. I think it's going to be... I love this side. So this side's going to be for sunset. Um, I got a fat hat. Here's my measly restart on that. I will probably, I'll definitely find something to do with the other half. Well, most of the other Banshee fabric. I do really like it in the Joblin. Um, and I really enjoy stitching on the Joblin. Um, but I think I'm going to try and save and salvage this. Someone suggested, so I'll probably rip these little things out. Um, but then save this and see if I can have someone make like a project bag for me with that on there. If you guys have any other suggestions of what I should do with this, please let me know because I definitely don't want to get rid of this. I mean, I did quite a bit of work on it. So, and it's very pretty. So, and then the one finish I can show you, like I said, I'll add those two in at the end of the small finishes that I had for the exchanges. Um, but the one finish I do have is Kiss by Madame Chantilly. Um, and it says Kiss Rudolph before to start. Super cute. I changed quite a bit on this pattern. Um, when did I start this? I started this in May. So this one didn't take me too, too long. I mainly worked on it at StitchCon. And then um, I think I did one random weekend. And then at Whistle Stop retreat so the first big thing I did this was on the petite dot uh, fabric button tan I changed it to blue because I think I, th I thought the colors would pop you a little bit more I changed the red which was supposed to be either just a regular DMC red or a DMC variegated um, I changed it to classic color works cupid just because I think it was a little bit better Christmas red, even though it's Cupid and so obviously Valentine's. Um, the DMC variegated one was very purpley, um, like a purple red. It was weird. So I just didn't think it fit Christmas too, too much. And then I didn't really like all the browns in it. Like the gifts were brown. His, um, the blanket on the deer the reindeer was brown and so I changed up and did um, DMC light effects so I changed the heart from white to gold I put in some this is not gonna focus um, red DMC light effects for the nose green and gold for his blanket and then a combination of red green and gold for the presents um, and ribbon so I'm really happy with the way it turned out it definitely needs ironed Katie and Steph had tried ironing it for me because I used to hoop and they were like hoop marks don't come out all right and now I'm actually caught on my piece oh there it goes um, and then I rolled it up and then I think everything smashed it and so the roll became folds so I need to re-iron that I think I'm gonna maybe send this down to Cincinnati to have um, Jan possibly make into a pillow for me. It's super cute. I really like it. Um, but yeah, there's my, my one finish I can show you. The other two will be videos. But I at least remember to do that. Let's talk. Let's talk exchanges next since I've mentioned those so far um so the harry potter exchange we got our partners or started officially on harry potter's birthday at the end of july um i decided my partner really liked potions class and so i picked one of the potions and there was a pattern that i found on etsy i'm actually gonna reach for it because I had to do a restart on that one too. Um, 
And so I found one, it was called Felix Felicis. I'll show you the pattern later, or actually the finished piece. But this is a little sneak peek. Um, and I decided to put it on a music box. So I had started this, I ordered the music box. It was coming from Hungary or, I don't know, somewhere like Eastern Europe was where it was coming from. And uh, I calculated everything out and it said this should fit. Well, when it showed up, this didn't fit. And this is about where I had gotten by the time the music box showed up. So I stopped working on that. I might finish this and then make something for myself. Um, and I restitched it on 36 counts. So this was 28 and I ended up going down to 36, which was actually even a tight fit. So I'm not sure where my calculations went wrong, but this was definitely way too big. So there's that. And then this is what I got from my partner. My gift went to um, Christina Haynes on Instagram. And then link is my homeboy, Heather, had me. So I, she sent me lots of good goodies. She sent me boxes of sprees and sweet tarts. I don't have those to show because I already ate them. I think I took them off my whistle stop trip. Um, I knew those would not last. So she sent me some floss. She sent me, you know, standard black and white DMC. Um, one of the variegated ones, purples and blues with a little pink in there. I really like this colorway. And then she sent me a most sale dog, which I'm assuming this is supposed to be for Ravenclaw because that's my house. She sent me a needle palette. Um, so you can stick your needles in there. You can write the, the floss numbers or symbols on there as well, which is nice. And there's a bunch of those little cards in there. Um, and then this, this was my main gift and my small. So my favorite character in Harry Potter is Luna Lovegood. So here she is all stitched up. She made it into a little ornament hangy thing. Um, and then she bought me a Luna Lovegood figurine. So there she is. Very, very cute. So this was, like I said, Heather Link is my homeboy. Um, I loved it. Whoop. Whoops. Third time's a charm. So thank you, Heather. Um, so that was the first exchange. Other gifts I got, I'm totally going to say my white elephant gift for the last of the gifts. Um, just because it was amazing. So, most of the ladies, or a few of them, brought gifts when we went on our whistle stop retreat. Crystal from the Kitchen Stitchers made us all needle binders. So, I got a little squirrel. And a Santa head. Super cute. Um, Sharon got us all bags with needle minders as well. I'm sure I'm missing something. So where did that one go? I lost something guys. Which one did I lose? There it is. Alright. All right. So Sharon gave us a bunch of nail binders too. These ones, I think she ordered. Um, the first one says, Stitch Your Stress Away. And the other one is this really pretty blue butterfly. I love it. I don't remember where she got these ones from. But um, I love the butterfly. And then she gave me this one. A little Mardi Gras one. And then she painted, hand painted this one. She makes gorgeous hand painted needle miners. And then the other one she gave me, I think I already showed you. Um, I put it on my Zuka. This is a little hand painted pumpkin that she did as well. Love this, Sharon. You're going to make me all the needle miners and you don't know it. Um, so Sharon gave us that. 
And then Cindy from Cindy's Cross Stitch, she came and visited us the one day, um, Saturday. And she brought everyone Knoxville chocolate. So I had that. And then payment staff gave us a little goodie bag. And in here we had a cup. Eat, drink, and be scary is what my cup says. A goblet. Skeleton hand goblet. And then a pattern. How cool is this? By Needle Bling Designs. Um, so they actually talked to her and uh, she sent everybody in our group this pattern and all of the goodies. So there's fabric, the floss, the trim, the backing fabric, the eyes for the little felt eyes for the, and um, the felt body for the spider. How amazing is this? We were all joking like, Jan's going to get tired of finishing nine of these same pillows. But it's super cute. Um, I haven't started on it yet, but I love it. So it's on Weeks Dye Works um, Chartreuse 30 count. I love that green. So that'll be a fun little stitch. And then we all got the bag. Steph and I have the same bag. She told me that she purposely did that. So those were those gifts, and then we did our white ele elephant exchange. Um, I picked second or third to last. Uh, my gift that I stitched was actually, I think, the second one to be picked, um, and then it got passed around quite a bit. Poor Delisha, she really, really wanted it, and it just kept getting taken from her. Um, when I picked, I laid it on thick. So... I picked out this little cauldron bucket from Sharon and I opened the card and I want to just keep, I was like, okay, if you guys steal this, that's fine, but I'm keeping the card. So it's this cow and it says, holy sheet, happy Halloween. I love it. I love this card so much. Um, so that was the first thing in my bucket. Get some candy buttons. A peppermint marshmallow pop. Another wine goblet. So I have a matching set for me and my non-existent boyfriend. Um, skeleton socks. I broke the cardinal rule and I wore these on Saturday. I can't remember. I think we did the exchange either Thursday or Friday. Thursday night, maybe? Maybe we did Thursday night. I don't remember. I have short-term memory. Um, and then I had not one, but two stitchy gifts. And so this was the first one. Little box says, rest in peace. And on the inside, it's a little skeleton. How awesome is this? So I told them, I was like, you guys, I'm going to be heartbroken if you steal this from me. Because it's a skeleton and I'm a physical therapist and I work with bones. I work with people's skeletons, basically. And make them stronger. And they were all like, really, Melissa? Really? So I made them all feel guilty. So no one stole this from me. Um, I loved that. And then I really wanted to see what was in the coffin. So that's why I picked this bucket. Um, then there was another just randomly wrapped tissue paper thing. And this one was in it. So it says happy Halloween. Little skeleton man dangling the candy corn. He's all sexy. Hanging that little candy corn. I love this. And she was like, I didn't think the coffin one would be enough. So I stitched this too. What? Um, it's backed with a beautiful green wool. I love this. It's got little buttons on it. I am obsessed with my gift. As you can see why I laid it on thick and wouldn't let anybody else steal this. I'm obsessed. Obsessed. With the card, 
with the stitching, with the socks. All right, so I think those are gifts. I'm just gonna reach over here and grab my haul. There's a lot of it. Um, and then I do have a giveaway because I did pass a thousand subscribers. I totally forgot to mention that in the first part of my video. Um, so I have a pattern kitted up that I'm gonna be giving away. So let me grab haul and that, and then we'll keep going. All right. Actually, the first one is not haul. So I was cleaning upstairs or looking for a glue sticker or something, and I found yes. Um, so this is a really old pattern. The Columbus skyline does not really look like that anymore. There's a few more buildings now. Um, this is a hand-drawn uh, chart. Sharing Kids Creations, Cincinnati designer. Um, this is not mine. I think this is my mom's. My mom used to stitch. She doesn't really stitch anymore. Um, but... Ooh, that needle is severely bent. All right, I'm going to take that out of the fabric. So, oh, there's a ton of needles. What in the world? Uh, little rough spots on those. I'll see, have to see if I can get them out. So, she has this started on, it looks like 14 count, Ada. Um, so, I'm totally going to finish that. I just have to see if we cross our X's the same way. I'm assuming we do. Oh, we don't. Interesting. Okay. My mom and I cross our X's differently. Who would have thought? Not me. She's the one that taught me how to stitch. Alrighty. So that's going to be awkward when I stitch it. Um, but yeah, there's that. Really cool. I don't even know if all these plus colors are in existence anymore, but we will find out when I go to stitch this. I just thought it was cool. So, not haul, but more stitchy stuff. So we're going to do this by store. I'm not sure if they were all done at one time, but... So, the first one is actually not a store. We should just said we're going to do things by store. Um, the first one was actually from Facebook, one of the stash unloading groups. I've had my eyes on these charts for a while. Um, Cottage Needleworks, the seasonal celebrations, I bought the whole set. So you guys have all seen these before. I'm not taking them out of the bags. We have winter, spring, summer, I'm guessing that says autumn. Yes, autumn, not fall. Um, so there are those. My first purchase. You guys are going to get real tired seeing the top of my head in this video. I'm sorry. Then I went to Craft Gallery up in Finley, Ohio. Um, on my way back from Michigan where I did my observation hours for a women's health PT. And um, I bought several things from there. So the biggest pattern I bought was Glendon Place Reindeer Games. They had so many different versions of these. Like, it was the same pattern, but like the Glendon Place logo had like changed. Like, one of them was blue, one of them was green, um, one of them was like a different green. Like, I don't know how old this is. 2009. So, I'm sure this is the logo has changed a bit over the years. But I love this one. They're all kind of sassy reindeer. Um, you guys all know I love beads and sparkle. So that was the big one that I bought. And then I bought a bunch of Mill Hill kits. So I did buy a set of Mill Hill kits. And these were the, um, the Ghost Trilogy. So we have Eerie. Ellis.
and essence. Um, I will probably not stitch them on the perforated paper. I think I'm probably going to get like a dark fabric, kind of like the background behind it shows, um, and stitch them on that together. I don't know what order yet. You guys have recommendations, let me know. I think the orange on the outsides balance each other. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with them on how, on what order I put them in. But then this one's like the fattest and these two are facing like in. So I'm not sure how I'm going to order them just yet. But I plan to do them all on one piece of fabric um, with the beads. I think I'm probably going to title this All the Mill Hills because I bought a lot of Mill Hill kits. Um, and so one thing I plan on doing, I bought an old window at a craft fair not too long ago, um, actually about a year ago at this point, and my thought process is to do 12 of the Christmas villages in the windows, in the window spots. So they're square panes, these are square designs. Um, about the same size so it'll be perfect they'll fit in there um, I don't know how yet I'm gonna attach them or hang them in the window but in my window you're gonna see my little village so I bought firehouse Again, I'm not taking these out of the package there we go and um, needle workshop from the craft gallery I have one other one I think it's a toy store. I might actually have a duplicate. I'm not sure. I don't write what I have down and my stash is growing. So that's what I bought from the craft gallery. Um, I am going to turn on some lights real quick because the sun just dropped and it got real dark in here. Hold on. I grabbed my window while I was up. Um, ugh, it's a beast, guys. So, that's my old window. Now I'm going to put all those little mill hill kits probably from behind um, so they're protected. This window definitely needs to be cleaned. Um, I did give it a. You probably can't even hear me behind it. I did give it a good wipe down when I bought it, but. It definitely needs cleaned a little bit more. So just thought I'd show that. Alright. So are you guys tired of me getting up and down yet? Alright, so then I did buy a few things from Cross My Heart. Um Pretty what I had to buy when I was there. But I bought two Sam Sarah um, design studio pieces. Again, kind of from a set. So I bought Franken Fauna with all the animals and then Franken Flora with the pumpkins. Um, I just think they're really cute Halloween -y fall pieces. I love the colors. I love blues, purples. So that'll be perfect. I have a giant mess down here. And then one of the mirrors um, that I've had my eye on is actually one of the older ones. And it is, is there a copyright on this? I'm sure there is, I'm not gonna open it. Am I showing it to you yet? 97. Um, one of the few mermaids that I would wanna do. And it's because it's got all the beads. So this is Mermaid of the Pearls. The picture is horrible. I've seen a few people on um, Instagram with a finish of this one. And this whole thing is beads. Love it. All right. Then 
I had my Dixie Darling purchases. So, um, right inside the door they had what everybody's doing, the little sleds for sale. So I did buy a set of three. And then um, I bought the ones that you can do like letters, initials on. Um, so that was, that was what I bought. Sled and the sled pattern. And then I bought more mill hills because who can't get enough mill hills? So I bought two more of the Christmas series. Um, Village Bakery because duh, cupcakes. And then this is one of probably my favorite ones. Um, Palace Theater. I love this one. One of the other ones I know I want for sure is the Cathedral. So, and then I'm probably going to have to figure out what other ones I want. I like the general store, probably one of the houses, maybe the inn. Um, but yeah, two more of those. And then she actually had a bunch of Halloween ones um, that I figured I can change them out. So I may not have, if I can get six of these, I'll be pretty happy. Um, I'm not sure how many Halloween village type ones they are. Um, it's actually just called Autumn Series, whereas this one I think actually says Christmas Village on it. Um, so they have some non, they just have some random ones too in the series. Uh, but I like the one specifically with buildings or houses. Um, so the first one I found was Haunted Mansion. Let me see the price on there. Don't worry about it. I actually like the buttons on these ones, or the beads, buttons, whatever you want to call them, on this one. Um, I don't like it on the other ones. Haunted Hotel. Love this one. Opera House. I also love this one with the kitty cat. Ah, glare, guys. Sorry, I know it's bad. There's the Opera House. And then the last one was Laboratory. Frank's knocking on the door. Love this one. Um, so there was one more there that I saw that I liked. I want to say it was like Haunted Farm or something like that. But it was an old barn um, with some, I think, ghosts coming out the windows. I took a picture of it so that I at least have it saved on my phone um, with the name. That way I can order it at some other point and then I'll have to scour the website and see what else they have. Um, I was debating... I, I don't feel like I want to do any of these on paper. I've never stitched on the perforated paper. It might be fine, but I feel like I would just be more comfortable stitching it on fabric and then like matting it on like sticky board or whatever um, to give it the weight. I don't know. I don't really have plans to stitch these right away, but I bought four of them. So, yeah. All right. That's my haul. We're close to an hour here with just that, and I still have those two videos to add of the pieces I stitched. Um, and so I didn't think of a question. We'll just do something really basic. So the holidays are coming up. So I picked a Christmas pattern, um, and it's fully kitted up for you. So minus the fabric. Um, I was going to do that, and then I just didn't know... If you would want to stitch it on the cauliflower for fabric or what so I just decided um, about the pattern the the threads the beads and the specialty threads um, which is Krynik so hopefully you guys like beading and Krynik um, this is a Glendon place one of my favorite designers um, and it was actually one of the stitch models at craft gallery it's woodland wonder so you got some pretty trees, the reindeer with the obscene rack of antlers. Um, so I believe the antlers are all stitched in Krennic. There's some Krennic in through the trees. 
Um, lots of beads through the trees. But I have really, really pretty colors, greens and browns. Um, some champagne -y, gold type filament. Um, beads, coppery, green. So everything's in there for you. I'm sure when I send this out, I'll send some other goodies. I'm going to ballpark. I will actually send time on my phone this time to make another video so that there is a deadline. I'm going to do the day after Thanksgiving because I know I have that off. Um, this is the first time ever that we as an office will be closed on that day. Normally we work um, and just a few people get it off, but I'm pretty sure everybody requested it on our holiday um, vacation sheet. So that will be when my next video is. I'm going to mark it on my calendar so I do it. That's about a month out, a um, couple weeks, so you have plenty of time to enter. Um, like I said, I'll throw in some other goodies as well because I'm not just going to send this, although I think that's a pretty good gift. Um, so what I want to know is it'll be right after Thanksgiving. So let's do your favorite, just favorite holiday tradition. It can be any holiday, um, but just a tradition that you love about the holidays. Okay. So there's your giveaway gift. Enter and you may win. Please be a subscriber, please be 18, yada, yada, yada. You guys know the rules. I'm not the biggest floss tuber, so I'm sure I'm not the only one that you watch that has ever done a give giveaway. Please do not put giveaway in the comments. I will delete it because I don't want those weird people trying to find um, random giveaways. So. I think that's it. Like I said, I'll have the two videos at the end um, to throw in for the smallest exchange. Yeah, I think that's it. So, thanks for coming back and watching me. I will be better. I will make a video in a month um, and try and be more regular. I always say that, but I'm a big fat liar, so don't worry about it. Um, I do appreciate you coming back and watching my videos. I appreciate the likes and the comments. Um, I think with life being just a little bit more back into the nor normal rhythm, I will be more active on FlossTube and um, on Instagram as well. I've kind of taken a little hiatus from there. So my stitchy bug came back after StitchCon. It just, life got in the way. So please leave any questions, comments below. Again, thanks for stopping by. And um, I will see you guys next time in a month. Bye. No, it's not going to stop. Not going to stop. Awkward. So I wanted to show you one of the pieces I've been working on since I couldn't show you in my video, um, since this has already been sent out in the mail at this point. Um, so I participated in the Harry Potter sale. Minty Stitcher on Instagram organized it. Um, you filled out a little questionnaire about, you know, your your house, um, your favorite characters, your favorite class. Um, and then you stitched a little, she hooked you up with a partner. You stitched a small um, and then filled their bag with some goodies. So this is the piece that I stitched. Um, my partner's favorite class was potions. And if you've ever watched Harry Potter, this is a potion that Harry gets um, as actually as a reward for um, making the best potion in the class in um, Half-Blood Prince. Uh, and it's Felix Felicis. Um, it's a potion that gives you good luck. So the pattern I found on Etsy... I liked it because it's not going to focus real great. Um, there's a little bit of Krynik in here. I changed the words actually to Krynik. Um, it was supposed to be just be DMC. I changed it to 025 um, number 4 braid. Just to give a little extra sparkle. But then, um, it, like I said, it's totally not going to focus here. Ooh, ooh. 
Um, but there's a little bit of Krynik, sorry, I'm losing my phone here, throughout the piece as well. So it's got a little bit of shimmer. It's not showing up great on camera here, but oh well. Um, and one of the things that I found also on Etsy was a music box. So I that's what I decided to put it on. I'm going to do my best to hold it and spin the dial here. But it did say Harry Potter on the top of the box. I wanted to put my piece there. So I did cover that. But on the inside is a Harry Potter quote. And it says, happiness can be found even in the darkest of times if one only remembers to turn on the light. And then this does play the Harry Potter theme song. Um, this probably, I just tried this once before and I totally failed. So it's going to start in the middle of the song, I'm pretty sure. Yes. But I will go all the way through one more time here. All right, so that was the end of the song. Let me play it one more time through. That is one of the pieces I've worked on since you last saw me um, and why I have not been posting on Instagram much. Um, I'm pretty, um, pretty pleased with this. So here we go. So here's the second piece that I've been stitching on that I have not really shown much um, on Instagram. So this is for our little private stitching retreat down in um, Sweetwater at Whistle Stop um, in Tennessee. So we did a white elephant exchange. This is the piece I did. This is a Val's stuff pattern. I believe it's called the gang's all here. Um, I stitched it on vintage country mocha, I believe is what I stitched on. And then um, I just bought a Mill Hill treasure little moon to put on there. Uh, it's really cute. I finished it <laughs> at 9.31 the night before I'm leaving because I'm a procrastinator at heart. Um, I just did a little purple. I found this at like Michael's. It's just a little metal sign. Um, I was really hoping the polka dots would show up more, but it's a purple and black polka dot um, with this little orange pom-pom trim. I think it's cute. I literally ran out of um, glue. Like, literally, there's nothing left in there. I had to use a little, like, dowel rod to push it out just to be able to finish this. Because I thought I had more upstairs, and I don't. So, this is it. It's not my greatest efficient finish ever um but i'm pretty proud of it sorry you see my super messy like super messy count counter you know your physical therapist when you have a spine keychain yep um but yeah super proud of this super cute i really like it my white stitches are on point in this one i really took my time so whoever got this better like it and better appreciate it because those white stitches are awesome all right so i think that will probably be my last video i don't know if i'll post anything from um the retreat on to the end of this if i do you'll see it and if you don't i will see you guys next time bye